formic acid and oxalic acid, two natural substances used by beekeepers worldwide in the fight against Varroa. But what really happens when we put these acids inside the hive? Do they leave residues in the honey, wax or brood? A recent six-month study tracked exactly how these acids move through the hive and the results reveal a lot about how safe these treatments really are. Let's take a closer look. One of the biggest problems in beekeeping today is Varroa destructor. The Varroa mite, the parasite, reproduce inside the brood cell, weakening young bees and spreading dangerous viruses at the same time. Left unchecked, it can wipe out entire colonies in a single season. The mites invade brood cells, multiply and drain the developing bees. Beyond sucking nutrients, they also act as carriers for multiple viruses. The results? Colonies quickly weaken and may collapse entirely. For decades, beekeepers relied mainly on synthetic acaricides like amitraz, fluorinate and cumafos. These treatments are fast and effective, but they come with two major problems. Residue build up inside the hive, especially in wax and sometimes even in honey. Resistance development. Over time, mites can adapt to these chemicals and become less affected. How much of this resistance risk is real and how much is overstated is still being debated. That's why natural treatments are getting more and more attention in beekeeping. They're safer for the beekeeper, safer for the honey, and they don't leave behind lasting chemical residues. Among them, formic acid and oxalic acid uh, are the best known and most widely used. Both are natural present in the hive. In fact, they occur in many plants, fruits and vegetables, and even in a small amount in honey and pollen. This is why research and practice have shifted toward these natural options. For beekeepers, They've become popular because they are relatively inexpensive, simple to apply, and at least in theory, they don't leave long-term or dangerous residues inside the hive. But here's the big question. When we introduce these acids in higher doses, how do they behave? Where do they accumulate? How long do they remain? And do they harm the bees? or the brood? A Spanish research team set out to answer exactly these questions. Their goal was to study formic acid and oxalic acid residues under real field conditions, inside different parts of hide. They worked with 12 colonies. Four were treated with uh, oxalic acid, four were treated with formic acid, and four served as un untreated Controls. The treatment were repeated several times and trial lasted six months. Samples were collected uh, from honey, pollen, wax, adult bees, and brood. Each sample was first frozen and later analyzed in the lab using ion chromatography, a technique sensitive enough to detect even the tiniest traces of the acids. This gave researchers a very clear picture of how this acid spread throughout the hive. One of the most surprising findings was that both acids were present even before any treatment began. Honey naturally contained high levels of formic acid, 469 to uh, 653 milligrams per kilogram. Pollen was rich in oxalic acid, 324 to uh, 490 milligrams per kilogram. This shows that these acids are a natural part of the hive. They are not foreign chemicals, but substances that come in through plants, nectar and pollen. Still, it raises an important question. Are the natural forms the same as the acids we apply during treatments? 
or are they present in different forms inside the hive? Hopefully, the research can give us some clues. Even so, it's reassuring. When we use formic acid or oxalic acid, we are not introducing something completely artificial. We are simply supplementing the hive with larger doses of substances that already exist naturally. In honey, formic acid levels did rise slightly after treatment, but they stayed within the nature range. Post-treatment, levels were around 737 and to 779 milligram per kilogram. This amount is considered safe for human consumption and falls in line with what different honey types can naturally contain. Oxalic acid levels in honey barely change remainly between 100 to 138 uh, milligram per kilogram. In wax, both acids showed very low levels and disappeared quickly after treatment. That makes sense. Wax is fatty, while these acids are water soluble. And that's a major uh, advantage over synthetic chemicals, which can remain trapped in wax for years. The takeaway is clear. Neither formic nor oxalic acid build up in dangerous amounts in honey or wax. In pollen, oxalic acid levels were always high and treatments only caused a slight increase. This suggests that the main source of oxalic acid in brood isn't the treatment itself, but the pollen the workers bring into the hive. During the treatment periods, traces of the acid also appeared in the bodies of adult bees and larvae. Formic acid, 7 to 86 mg per bee or larvae. Oxalic acid, uh, 82 to 338 micro, uh, micrograms per bee or larvae. For adult bees, these levels are well below what's considered dangerous. But for larvae, the story is different. In some cases, oxalic acid levels came close to the threshold considered harmful. The LD50 for larvae, the dose that kills half of them, is around 45 micrograms. That means heavy oxalic acid exposure in brood can cause temporary losses. This is an important warning. Oxalic acid is effective, but in high doses it can harm larvae. The study highlights several key takeaways. The acids are natural. Finding residues in honey or pollen isn't alarming. They are naturally present anyway. Honey is safe to eat. Even after treatment, honey remains within natural ranges and never becomes toxic. That's a huge advantage compared to synthetic chemicals. Wax clears quickly. No long-term contamination, unlike older treatments that linger for years. Brood need, needs attention, especially with oxalic acid. Avoid high doses, as larvae can be sensitive. Timing matters. Best applied when brood levels are low, late fall or early winter. This reduces uh, risk and increases effectiveness. A tool for sustainable beekeeping formic and oxalic acid don't leave lasting residues. That makes them excellent option for clean, sustainable beekeeping where honey and wax stay safe over the long term. This was the first study to track the behavior of acids inside the hive under real field condition for six months. The lesson is clear. Formic acid and oxalic acid are powerful weapons against varroa, while remaining safe for honey and wax. But the beekeeper must know how to use them. Oxalic acid in high doses can damage brood, so it always needs to be applied with caution. Formic acid is somewhat gentler, but it also requires care. The final message of this study is this. These acids are far safer than the old synthetic treatments. And if used wisely, both bees and beekeepers win. This research shows that natural-based treatments can be not only effective, but also clean and sustainable.
But here's where my own experience comes in. Around 2018 uh, to 2019, I used oxalic acid combined with glycerin strips, applied exact as recommended. The result was a disaster. Up until then, I was overwintering strong colonies on 8 to 12 frames of bees, healthy and well prepared. After this treatment, most colonies collapsed in strength. By fall, I could only overwinter them on 3 to 4 frames and it was clear something was seriously wrong. Spring painted an even worse picture. The queens that managed to sur survive winter simply couldn't rebuild the colony. Brood production dropped by 55 to 60% compared to the previous year. Before, they could maintain 8 to 10 frames of brood with the nest fully covering two boxes. After treatment, there was barely two to three frames of brood left. They couldn't even populate a single box properly. For me, this was undeniable proof that the treatment combination severely damaged the queens. It didn't just weaken the colonies in the short term, it destroyed their ability to grow in the long run. The biggest problem with most research is that it looks almost only at mite killing efficiency. They count how many varroa mites die, how clean the colony becomes, but almost no one asks the real follow-up questions. What happens to the queen? What happens to brood rating? What happens to colony strength? From my own experience, both oxalic acid and formic acid can have devastating effects on queen performance. That's why since 2019 I've completely stopped using oxalic and formic acid treatments. I don't care how many studies say they are effective against mites. If the colony collapses afterward, the whole thing is pointless. In my own apiary, the single greatest loss I ever suffered came directly from these treatments. To date, I firmly believe, no matter what the labs and researchers say about effectiveness, if they don't measure the queen's long-term laying ability and the colony's real strength, the picture is incomplete. I personally test every method for about three years. Only if I still see good results after that do, I bring it into my beekeeping as part of my strategy. That treatment was a very costly lesson for me. Formic acid, oxalic acid, are they natural allies in the fight against Varroa? Or should they be avoided because they weaken colonies and ruin queens? Research says we shouldn't fear them. If used correctly, they are safe for honey, wax, and long-term colony health. The secret lies in moderation and careful application. Used wisely, they can help maintain strong, healthy, and clean hives. But my personal experience tells a completely different story. I lost 80 colonies, completely gone. For me, that was enough. We continue testing treatments, but I won't use anything as a core strategy in my apiary unless I am 100% sure it won't damage colony strength or queen fertility. That's my recommendation for you as well if you want a powerful, productive apiary long term. Build your own treatment strategy, one that's effective but also supports colony growth. This experience taught me a hard truth. Don't blindly trust research papers and lab numbers. Trust your bees. Watch what happens in your colonies. If something harms them, let it go. I let go oxalic and formic acid because, for me, nothing matters more than protecting my queen and keeping my colonies strong for the long run. I am Oscar and this is the Intelligent Real World Beekeeping Journey. Until next time, keep buzzing.